hope sort of the same thing happens to him. Maybe he sort of reflects on, ah, maybe this isn't the right decision for me to, to ask for a trade. And not only, look, players ask for trades all the time. That stuff happens. But then he walked away from the team. He left the team. Mm-hmm. I mean, that that's my biggest problem that I have with him is he's now, I don't even know where he is. I don't know if he went home or he's sitting in Hartford in his apartment or what. Um, but, I, you know, his trade value has got to be like nothing. Any any report that you see out there from other teams that may potentially be interested, they're saying that he doesn't have like, you know, NHL skill level. So that's, that's you know, sort of scary. I mean, I think for him where he's like, nobody's really going to be interested in me and the Rangers aren't going to trade him for for nothing uh you know he's a former first round draft pick so you know I, I hope at some point the rangers may get a call over to anderson the way they did for kratzoff and say look you know uh, this is this isn't going right this isn't a good look for anybody you know we're all we need to get this figured out so how about we get you back in the fold let's get you on a line with kratzoff or you know or we may be bringing kako down and we'll get you with him and let's get your confidence back up the way we did with kratzoff and Let's let bygones be bygones and, and, and let's move forward because as much as I'm frustrated with what Leia did and, and quitting on the team and, and, and that's very disappointing. You know, he's a guy, if you remember, and I think it was our first podcast, we were talking about potential captains for this team. I even mentioned Leia Anderson as a captain. Well, you, you were know, smoking crack forward. back then. That's yeah, what. apparently. <laughs> um, so you know, for for me, it's it's a little disappointing to see that he would quit on the organization. Um, but having said that again, young kids, kids, look, kids make mistakes. Maybe somebody in his inner, inner circle is giving him bad advice, um, that, Hey, let's get out of this team. They're not giving you a chance here and whatever may have been said, but, um, you know, you got to stay within the organization because you just never know when the opportunity is going to happen. You saw Hedo was down in Hartford, then Zabinijad got hurt. Hedo was called back up and, and, and he's run with it. Um, like I mentioned before, Lemieux was hurt. Anderson would have been the first guy called up. He would have been back up. Howden is now on the wing, um, which opens up more ice time and another a, a bigger opportunity for Anderson going forward. But now he quit the team. Like I said, he's sitting in, a, in an apartment in Hartford somewhere, and he's not getting the opportunity. He could be playing in the NHL right now, getting you know twelve minutes a night after everything that's sort of gone on the last few weeks, and he sort of has egg on his face. So you know, I wouldn't mind seeing. The two sides come to a resolution, get him back in Hartford, um, and then ultimately back in the NHL with Kratzoff. And, and uh, you know, if you can get those two guys in the lineup, you know, once Lemieux gets back from the injury, you now got Howden on the wing. I got to tell you, I'd be pretty pumped about what we're seeing with, with our forwards. Yeah, I mean, as far as Anderson's concerned, as far as I'm concerned, I think he, I think the, sh- the kid should head back to Europe. I think he should just kind of pack up and maybe go back to Sweden and look at himself in the mirror here because he has nothing to show for himself. Not nothing good, nothing positive. He, he doesn't have any points, you know, that he can kind of stack up and say, Hey, look what I've done while I was either playing on the Rangers roster or down in, uh, down in the AHL. He's got nothing. So, I mean, I think he just needs to, you know, head on back home. I mean, he's still young enough. I mean, I would almost encourage him to probably just get back playing in the Swedish leagues or something or find something to do in Europe and, and, and reestablish number one is credibility and, and start putting some production up because, I mean, what what kind of, you know, you just nailed it. What kind of trade value does the guy have, really? Uh, any any organization today, they don't want to – I think the days are long gone where, um, you know, especially in today's NHL, I think this is going on for the last 10, 15 years, and it just goes to show by the ca- the caliber of players now that come in from juniors, AHL, uh, 18, 19 years old, and go right into the league. You know, you can take a guy like Austin Matthews. You can take Capo for now, right now, even though, uh, you know, Capo's not really producing too much. But he's a model citizen. So they come in. They're, they're smart kids. They're, they're highly educated. You know, I know Matthews has done some stupid stuff off the ice. And, um, you know, Kane did that years ago. But for the most part, Kane in Chicago, um, these guys come in and they do their job. I mean, a guy like Matthews and, say, Kane, as far as examples of guys who've maybe had some trouble off the uh, off the ice, it makes it difficult for anybody because they're what they do on the ice. It's not an excuse for bad behavior, but it's few and far between. But what I'm trying to get at here is a guy like Anderson really doesn't have anything to show. If he was putting in, you know, a bunch of goals and, and showing assists and helping out on special teams and, and really making a, a showing and, uh, you know, in, in game summaries and everything else, I could say, all right, maybe he's just having a little tough time here and a team might take a chance on him. 
I just don't see in today's NHL they, they're going to want a headache like that, especially with a team like the New York Rangers. The Rangers don't really have that kind of a record where players leave here going, hey, they were treated like crap. It's a lousy organization. We have the best facilities, an incredible arena, steady fan base. Uh, anybody that pretty much leaves here outside of Hayes may be whining about one or two things. But as far as the structure of the New York Rangers organization, I mean, if you're bitching and moaning about the Rangers, what's that going to be like if you go somewhere else? So I think um, I think he's in a bit of a, a bit of trouble here for himself as far as um, his image, KD. And um, like I said, it's a shame to see, but I, I, that's my opinion. I think he should probably head back west. Uh, yeah, head back to would that be Western Europe. Yeah, or? and, and uh, I, no, that's I east. Be... I'm sorry. If we're in New York, we're you got to go over the Atlantic, right? That's east. Yeah, okay, there you go. <laughs> Head east, there you go. There you go. Yeah, I, and I, I wouldn't be against that either. I think the biggest thing for me is is the communication end. I think that Gordon or JD or somebody has to reach out to him. And I'm not saying that they haven't. Maybe they have, but you know, and, and come up with some type of game plan with him and just say, look, we we still want you in this organization. What do you think would be the best plan for you to get that? And if he says, look, I think maybe going back home. You know, being around family and friends and 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 my old team or or just being in, uh, you know, back over in Sweden, uh, then then maybe let him do that and figure it out. Look, it worked for Kratzoff. He went back home and and it didn't necessarily work out. But now that he's back, it, it, it seems to be working. So, look, if that's got to be the model that you use with Anderson as well, then then so be it. But, um, you know, I'd hate for them to completely give up on the guy. Again, kids make mistakes. You know they get frustrated. He's a he's a you know seventh overall pick and thinks he should be playing in the NHL and getting more time and should maybe shouldn't be on a four, when he is in the NHL should be on a fourth line with you know Haley and and Brendan Smith and I get all that, but at the same time you do have to pay your dues um, and, and and do the right thing. So look if they want to if they want to give him uh, another chance I'd be all for it and if that means going to Sweden so so be it. Um, but, uh, you know, I don't think that they should just completely give up because I think he would fit in nicely on this team. Um, and he's not going to be anything above the bottom six anyway. I mean, when you look at, at the centers on the team between Zabinijad and Hedl and Strom and, um, so, you know, there's really not a, a spot for him necessarily in, in the top, you know, six. Um, but maybe you can put him on the wing as well, the way they have with Howden and, and how it seems to be working with him. Maybe it works with, with Anderson as well, and you could find some uh, more ice time for him, you know, in that top nine or in that top six on the wing, um, just to see if maybe that's a move that sort of reignites him. So, you know, I'm not ready to give up on the guy yet. Yes, disappointing as far as him quitting on the team. You know, I'm not a fan of that at all. But, you know, young kid makes mistakes and, you know. Let, let's see what he still got. So, uh, let's see what he still has. Uh, I'm ready to give him another chance. You're a kind man. You're a real kind <laughs> man, KD. <laughs> Pack his bags and ship him out of here, baby, as far and, as I'm And, you concerned. know, it's funny. I, I probably – and I was arguing on Twitter, and we always talk about what goes on on Twitter, but I'm arguing with people, like, against Anderson that I call him a quitter and somebody – he's not quitting on the team. I'm like, well, that actually is what he did, you know. Um, so, you know, I have my issues with him. Don't get me wrong, but – you know, I would hate for us to get rid of him because I do think there is a, a level of talent there, um, you know, and see him go somewhere else and, and, and succeed because um, I think he, he can do that here. And I think he'd be a, a real good piece in that bottom six for us. Um, so I, I, I hate to give up on him. I just, I just have this image of Kratzoff high five and Anderson as he's walking out the door. I know. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> I, I – I mean, it is a little, you know, and I hate I hate to put it all on Anderson. It is a little bit concerning to see this happen to two of their prospects so far. I mean, you know, we're not even at the halfway point of the season, and you've had two prospects sort of hightail it out of there. You know, one has thankfully come back. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, so, you know, and, and I don't know if it's that, that's just immaturity on their end or, you know, the, the Rangers organization isn't communicating with these players about what they're looking for or, or what, you know, their role is going to be with the organization. But, you know, hopefully if it isn't an, an internal issue with the Rangers, they're looking themselves in the mirror and saying, well, what are we not doing with these young guys that are, you know, unfortunately having them bolt or, you know, leave the team or extra trade. So, 
you know, I don't want to put it all on the player. I mean, I don't, and again, I don't know what's going on internally with the Rangers. Um, but, you know, hopefully that the organization is taking a look at itself as well and say, well, what do we need to make sure that this doesn't happen with maybe a Shest Yorkin, um, who is, who is just killing it down in the AHL. He's the number one goals against average, number four save percentage. I mean, there's really not more, much more he could do down there. You know, it's only a matter of time before maybe he starts getting frustrated. I know we've, we've discussed this a, a bunch on the podcast, but, you know, hopefully the organization is learning a little bit with what's going on with Anderson and Kratzoff with how they handle the Chess Yorkin situation. It's all going to be good in one way or the other, buddy, because, uh, you know, I know I'm going to make out because I'm, I'm releasing a new line of salad dressings called Chesty's Salad Dressing. <laughs> <laughs> nice. It's Chesty Amen. sauce, baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we'll we'll see how this uh, drama unfolds, with Mr. Anderson, as we uh, we got our, our our first few drama episodes of the Kratzoff thing, which is is going all right. We'll see what's going on. But I tell you right now, buddy, one guy who's not going anywhere, and his numbers going up in the Raptors, buddy, and that's Connor McStrom, baby. Let's talk about Stroma here, buddy. He's uh, second on the sign team. him to a ten year deal. Yes, ten year deal. I am I am totally <laughs> down with that. I want it. I love it. He's got four goals in the last five games here. He's right behind Panarin. He's at thirty five points. Team leader, baby. He's all good stuff. Uh, I, I, I mean, you know, I, I love seeing everybody going back and forth on Twitter and stuff, but I've always kind of felt he's just been a steady kind of guy. The guy goes out there and does his job, and, man, he's, he's got a flair for it, and he's clicking there with uh, Panarin, and he's putting the puck in, and, you know, hey, I, the trade value for him, I, you know, I don't know. A lot of people, we don't know anything until we get to the spring, and we've talked about this, too. But right now, a part of this rebuild in, in terms of what the Rangers have as assets and the guys and, and, and the quality guys that they have on this team and this roller coaster, the up and down, the win one, lose one kind of thing, and we're in a, in a little bit of a positive stretch here. But, man, I think Strom is just a really good cog in this wheel. And obviously, it's going to take another 20 games to kind of see where the consistency goes, the up and down, the drops and everything. But right now, when it goes good, man, Strom is usually a big part of – Anything the Rangers are doing well, especially when they're scoring and winning games. And I just, I, I love the kid and I hope he hangs around for a while. Yeah. And, I, you know, it's amazing with Ranger fans sometimes. I mean, they knock the guy because he's playing well with Panarin. Like, why? How is that a negative? I know. Like, I don't, I don't get because, it. Because he can play well with elite talent. That's yep. a negative. Not everybody can. I mean, the guy has 35 points this year in 38 games. And, you know, and everybody sort of puts, and I said this on Twitter the other day, everyone puts an asterisk next to every goal he scores. Well, Panarin set him up. Well, he's on a line with Panarin. Well, Panarin. Well, it's like Panarin, yes, he may be passing the puck to him, but he's not skating over to him, grabbing the stick out of his hand, and then scoring for him as well. Could you imagine imagine the fans at Edmonton putting an asterisk next to dry saddles? Every goal he gets from Con McDavid. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Anybody who plays with Panarin, their stats are going to be inflated because Panarin is an elite player in the league. I mean, he's, he but, was brought to this team to do that. Exactly. And everyone's like, well, if you take Strom off his line, you know, he's not going to put up those numbers. No kidding. If you take anybody off a line with Panarin, their numbers are going to go down because Panarin is that good. But Strom is still a very good hockey player. He's played 101 games as a Ranger so far, and has 68 points. Yep. I mean, Bravo. you know, exactly. And and he didn't play with Panarin last year, and he put up 33 points without him mm-hmm. in, in, in limited action from when he came over. So, you know, it, it baffles, you know, me that, you know, a lot of people look at, you know, the analytics of things are, and I get it. it his numbers are influenced by Panarin, but anybody's would. And, there still has to be a skill level there to be able to finish, to be able to set Panarin up. I mean, Panarin has 21 goals as well. You know, not all of them are unassisted. I bet you a large majority of them have a Ryan Strom assist attached to them. So the guy can play. Um, you know, for anyone who, who sort of, you know, is is demeaning or, or putting down his, his sort of skill level as just, you know, Panarin influences is, is, is ridiculous. The guy can play. So, you know, I get a little frustrated with Ranger fans sometimes because they it's weird. They sort of they always come down on 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 their better players. Like you see fans uh, demonizing Strom and they're going after, 
uh, D'Angelo. Let's trade D'Angelo. He's going to have 60 points this season. Let's get rid of him. It's like, he's a 24-year-old defenseman who's going to put up 60 points this year. And both of them, both Strom and D'Angelo, are restricted free agents. 